Hello everyone, my name is Pacha and you are watching a new episode of Wahat Jamila, our little desert zoo that we made for the Arid Animal Pack. And in fact, yeah, I didn't mention it last time, but we are today finishing building for the last of these animals from the Arid Animal Pack, Arid Desert Animal Pack. I still don't get the name right. Um, of course, we are building the backstage building and indoor viewing area for the black rhino as well as the cheetah. Of course the cheetah is not part of that DLC, but uh, we, I mix these two animals together and yeah, if you want to mo know more about that, um, I highly recommend watching the last episode where we uh, were building the main, um, yeah, outside habitat, uh, outdoor habitat basically. And today, as I said, we are focusing on the indoor building, um, finally a backstage area here in Wajamila. Despite me saying I will build all indoor areas in a separate episode or in a live stream, um, I couldn't help myself but build one for both of these species because I also wanted to have an indoor viewing area uh, for our guests, for the uh, black rhino, um, to maybe also escape the desert heat a little bit. They can come inside and enjoy the rhinos when they are inside, have a nice look at them, maybe enjoy a, a cool breeze from the AVs and such things. So um, yeah, this is what the plan is today. But before we st start talking about the build itself, a few announcements I have to make. Um, next week there will not be an episode or any video on my channel, simply because I'm not at home. Um, I'm with my family in my old hometown celebrating my birthday and yeah, just uh, enjoy seeing my family again after what is now quite half a year since I last saw them. And since I didn't have the time because we are, we are starting to um, drive there pretty, quite early this week, um, I didn't have the time to re pre-record something, I just said Okay, I, I just take my time and took a, take a break and I think that is also totally fine to do, um, even if you're a content creator, sometimes you just need some time for yourself. And the next part or the second announcement is that after I come back, so the week after next week, um, there will be the Q&A video where I will answer all of your lovely questions that you have already sent in. and. If you haven't already sent in a question and you still have something yeah, in your mind that you want to ask me uh, or want to ask a content creator for that matter too, um, there's still some time left. Leave your comments down in the question. Uh, no, leave your <laughs> questions down in the comments. And I, if I, if it fits and if it's yeah, getting not too long, I will try to answer all of your questions. Um, of course, if they are not too personal, uh, then I take my um, freedom to not answer them. But still, questions or the submissions for questions are still open, so take your chance if you want to know something. There already have been a number of cool ones uh, on my Discord and on YouTube here itself. So um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff we can talk about in that video. And after that, after yeah that uh, after that Q&A video, um, we will be back in Waha Jamila building for two animals that are not of the DLC, of course, because we have already built for all of them. We are we're gonna build an uh, exhibit for the meerkats, which will be in front of the uh, Somali wild ass habitat, as mentioned in that episode. And you will also build the habitat for the uh, yeah Nile monitor. Not, I was, was about to say the Asian water monitor, but no, the Nile monitor. And since we are in a very warm climate over here, we can even have an outdoor, mostly outdoor area for them 
and I think this would be looking very very cool um, to have them out outside with a little pool or something like that. I still have to think about the uh, yeah details uh, how the habitat will be laid out, but more about that when the time comes. But yeah, we are here building the indoor area. You already see me building a lot of walls and indoor walls. Um, these walls, if you're wondering, are the ones I also used. Um, so these tile walls. I used for my big backstage in Raven Creek, my big South American backstage. And if you want, uh, I can put them on the workshop, but they are very easy. It's just a plaster wall with tons of these Africa pack tiles slapped onto them. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. It is very simple, but it is that is what how it is and looks in most real life zoos. And speaking of real life, I have to say. While I always try to aim for as much realism as possible, um, at least I try in the ways what it, I'm capable of doing it, um, this area is somewhat realistic, but also somewhat not realistic. Um, so you can still use it as inspiration if you want for a rhino house. Um, you will see it better in the uh, showcase video at the end of the of this, yeah, of the speed build. Um, I went for free indoor areas for free uh, separation cages for the rhino. Two of them are of course pub uh, open to the public uh, so you can see them in the public. And I don't know the specific numbers but from experience and from stuff I've seen I think you should have at least four indoor cages for rhinos and at least if you have one some that are pub pub uh, open to the public you should at least have the same amount of numbers uh, that are not available to the public so backstage um, simply to uh, reduce stress for the rhinos um, and as I said I'm not an expert on um, big animal housing or something like that so elephant stuff I'm more uh, familiar with small animals and such things uh, with cages and small stables so I'm, not, so I'm not entirely sure but I think you should have more but the yeah, size uh, restrictions and um, the I had to f make the uh, backstage building fit onto the um, normal habitat, and this meant I had a little bit of restriction when it came when it came to sizing and length and everything. And I also didn't want to make this habitat too um, wide and stuff like that, like a big mega complex. Uh, I still want to have it yeah re realistically sized. And I also wanted to have this public viewing, so this meant a lot of restrictions and I had a lot of different layouts um, for myself. You already see sometimes these green lines on the bottom. These are yeah, my, my pre-work layouts where I think about how I could lay out everything and mark, my, mark the rooms I want to build and stuff like that. And I had a couple of those, so um, a couple of different iterations I where this house went through before I started building. And I'm happy how it is now. Um, I think I could do a better job with more um, you know, pre-planning maybe, but still uh, I really like this habitat and how the house looks in the end, uh, you will see it. Um, I think it still looks amazing and maybe not fitting to the desert vibe, it's more of a general zoo vibe uh, when it comes to the in inside of this uh, building, but still I, I really love it and yeah, it's, it's one of the many amazing habitats that I think I have built for this zoo, um, of course with all the experience that I now got with other projects like Raven Creek or Isle of Wild. Um, some people say, or some, uh, one person said in one of my live streams, um, that you can really see the difference between my early habitats, for example, from Raven Creek and then later ones, like also in Raven Creek with the South America area, you can really see the difference. And this is also something I wanna, yeah, some maybe it's some advice I wanna give you. Um, don't give up. Uh, if you are just started building if you are building for a little bit longer but you still don't feel uh, secure about it and you still are not happy with what you build don't get up go give up um, always try and uh, yeah gain more experience when building and at some point it's also be nice to compare your what your old stuff to your newer stuff and you will see how much you got better in building these things and in building in general and it will just boost your confidence uh, if you see how much uh, yeah, your experience has grown over this time and as I said, no, never give up, always try to achieve more and it's also not 
not wrong to uh, look at the workshop items, look at some stuff they have done, and maybe also some, some use some items from there. And learning from others is never a wrong thing. And also copying from real life, so um, doing real life stuff and rebuilding what they have done is also helps a lot and may in ha and helps really um, improves your building and stuff. So uh, yeah, this is also what I do mostly when I'm having some areas where I not have much inspiration. I just Google um, what is out there in the real world and then I try to make my own stuff out of it. Like with this, with that, which has influences from a couple of zoos, some of which I couldn't even remember, but Leipzig of course comes to mind. And um, they don't have an indoor area viewing for the rhinos. Um, their rhino building is hidden under the guest path, uh, funny enough, so you don't even notice that it's there. But still, um, especially the, the habitat itself it was heavily inspired by Leipzig. So yeah, um, we are now wrapping up the doors and the windows for this building. And yeah, the doors were also something I really had to look into. Um, what where, what doors do you have for rhinos and such? Um, it was really interesting also what other barriers. Um, you see this moat in front there and then these metal um metal pillars which will be later changing color into white because i figured white looks uh, a little bit better than this rusty um brown which also could mean there are some yeah some um, ingredients or some things that could be harmful f to the rhino so i said i went with this more white clean color and i said there is a, a also another backstage area and there's also another there's also another door two doors and also you see that the door here there was a second door on the other side of this uh, of this viewing area um, so both sides of the rhino uh, indoor area that had it had a door but I changed it to this side over here um, so to the second half of the outside habitat <laughs> you will see it later in the video um, to better transport the rhinos between the different areas and to better control where they are going and I'm not sure um, what to do with the cheetahs. Um, I think once the cheetahs are out in the habitat, of course, these indoor doors would have also be closed so that the cheetah doesn't get into the rhino indoor area. Um, otherwise, it could escape. Um, but I think this is something the keepers can do. And you will not see me building this complete madness uh, construction out of metal bars for the uh, in between walls between the different cheetah cages. And fun fact, these middle uh, bar f uh, constructions, cage con constructions will go in the end because I decided that uh, tile walls, uh, so uh, thick walls, would be better suited to separate the cheetahs. And it's also nice to show sometimes things that doesn't that don't work out in the end don't cut these things because uh, we are we youtubers or, or we content creators are always building perfectly no we don't uh, there's a lot of stuff we cut out there's a lot of m mistakes yeah now you see me deleting these walls because i'm deciding to go for the tie walls um don't believe just because you don't see it in the video that uh, we never make mistakes we never try have to try things out and that we sometimes uh, yeah delete whole areas and um, I also will make this whole Sheeta backstage area which is a little bit separated from the Rhino area I will make it uh, much lower in building height uh, later on because I decided that the ceiling was too far away it was too high from the ground and it looked a bit wrong I mean in the Rhino building it works because the rhinos are big creatures, so it does it, it really fits in the aesthetic. But for cheetahs, it, even if the guests can't see it, it looks a bit weird. And yeah, as I said, we all mo make mistakes. We all have to try things out. None of us kind of creators came into this world and was a perfect builder and a master creator or anything like that. We also started at the bottom, and we also had all all needed experience. Uh, and there yeah, are tricks and learning from others to get where we are and since so, so this means you can also achieve the whole level of creativity and detailism that we do and yeah as I said no, never give up um, yeah we are now building some decorations um, especially these planters that we are building now for a little of a green wall that will be here later on and I decided to go for more green and lush um, yeah foliage palette inside the building um, just because it's more climate controlled and we can have more uh, yeah, lush plants in here and this is a little trick I learned from Eben and Goron 
um, using the mesh as something like a tile on the floor, so it looks like uh, they are floored, they, they are the, the floor is, uh, is laid out with tiles and stuff like this. Really easy trick, looks really cool, of course, um, because of the depth of field, um, or the de depth of detail. Um, in some areas, the tiles or the mesh will disappear, but still, if you're close enough, it looks really nice and yeah, a little bit of a trick here for you to maybe uh, know about and yeah as I said this is the second door so we can bring in rhinos from the outside um, which will be later connected you will see it in the real time part which will be connected uh, via a gate with the indoor uh, rhino area um, that can go both sides so to also close up the uh, exhibit itself or the indoor space itself and yeah I think this is mostly everything uh, so far that is to say about this build. Um, you will later of course add also the ceiling, a double ceiling, so there would be potentially space for air conducts and air conditioning and stuff like that, um, since that's why the ceiling is uh, qu has quite a bit of, of height difference between this lower ceiling where we will fit in the glasses and then the upper ceiling, the outside ceiling. Uh, which uh, lies a bit uh, higher, so there could be air conduct, air conditioning and all the vents and stuff inside these two ceilings, between these two ceilings. And then we also will, of course, add some greenery and some more backstage props and uh, details like uh, crates and yeah, uh, hoses and all that sort of stuff. I <laughs> have to think about it, but sometimes uh, I don't uh, find the right words for it. And I would say I will leave you now with the rest of the video with some nice chill music by the wonderful people from Planet Zoo. They really, their soundtrack is one of the best, uh, yeah, relaxing soundtracks I ever heard. I will leave you now with the soundtrack and then I see you in the, yeah, quite long um, showcase video at the end of, the, of, the, of this video, uh, showcase part at the end of this video because we also have to show of course the habitat itself from the last episode because there wasn't a showcase uh, section over there. Um, so we are prepared for a little bit of a, of a longer showcase at the end of this video and until then enjoy the music and yeah thank you for listening so far. <laughs>
and there we are now in the real time part and I try to make it quick. I know this video is rather long already, but we have so much to show since I also didn't do a showcase last week of the habitat itself. So I'm gonna try to not yeah, talk too much about the smallest details and everything, but uh, people who know me know that I sometimes uh, get stuck on certain topics and then I talk for them on hours. But yeah, <laughs> let's <laughs> not talk anymore and go ahead with our with the habitat itself now with a full yeah, um, finished backstage uh, in the background. And I know I have unpaused the game. Okay, you are just not moving. <laughs> but yeah, this is now one of the free yards for the animals in here, the black rhino and the cheetah. And I really like how to announce, uh, especially that I try to avoid cross views as much as um, possible. There you can't get really credit cross view with this viewing area over here with the mud bath. There's a little bit of, of one over here, but it's very far away in the background. So that I don't think it's uh, very uh, distracting or anything. And on the second yard, of course, um, we have our cheetahs, our free cheetahs. I, as I said, in the video I didn't manage to get a king Sheeta. Um, but I'm still having a spotless one and I think that's still fine. And maybe in the future I get I have some luck and then I get one. Uh, you can also see of course the Sheeta doors in the background for their backstage holding as well as another gate for the rhinos. And yeah, um, it doesn't look that deep was um, from uh, this perspective from the other side, um, but actually it is quite deep and also we have hot grass down here, which you can't see at the moment. Uh, yeah, we have hot grass down here, so it's also a bit secure so that the cheetah doesn't climb up this, with these walls. I don't even know if cheetahs are so good climbers, but uh, just in case, <laughs> just in case. Um, you ignore this empty mess over here, there will be something in the future, and we get to these two areas over here, and by the way, this will be the place where I'm planning to add the Nile monitor, uh, which I spoke about in the video. So on this side will most likely be the, my monitor and then some planting in the middle or something like that. Uh, I have to see. Um, but yeah, another viewing area over here for the Sheeta and Rhino. And then you also get a sneak peek into the Sheeta's private area. There he uh, is right on command. Wow, <laughs> if I called them. Um, they're private area where they can escape from the rhinos. I explained everything about that in the last video. If you haven't checked it out by now, um, I highly recommend it. But yeah, this little private area for the cheetahs over here where they can play around and just hang and have a nice sleep in the shade, uh, which I think is very cool. And now we have to go back all the way because there was of course another way for us. You are still standing there. I have to check later if you are okay. Um, of course, my Dharma Gazelles and Alex are on this side, and <laughs> they're finally also using this side of the habitat and are not in the camel one all the time. Anyway, here we have our, hey, there's other rhino, uh, our mud bath viewing area, which I think turned out really great, um, especially if the sun is not blowing in your face, um, then you get a really nice view of the mud bath down here, and when the rhinos use that, um, it looks really cool. And you get a really close up look of them. Um, slightly a little bit of a yeah, double view over here, so you have to decide which area you are looking at, either the gazelles or the uh, rhino. But uh, it was the best I came up with, uh, with the layout, how it is. Maybe I will change in the future, who knows. And if we follow this path, I still have to make some signage over there for that. Our last viewing area is over here in this little corner. Um, where sometimes the cheetahs come by, and maybe I'd put some enrichment down for, also for the rhinos to come closer. But yeah, a small little viewing area over here um, that we also saw, of course, from the bridge over there. And yeah, this is the entrance to the rhino house. What you didn't saw in the video, um, and which I, what I made in the stream, was to add this little birdhouse over here um, with the lovely birds, the 
creator, of course, is in the comments. I'm sorry, I didn't write it down, but they, I think it was drag. Was it drag? I'm sorry if, if it was drag. Um, of course, the link to the workshop is down in the comments. My brain, uh, especially in the summer, is a little slower. I'm very sorry if I mess, messed something up here. But yeah, some lovely Turakao species over here. Um, I don't know if they would be held together. Two species here, I didn't know which ones. Um, well, I think some a nice little aviary while you're going uh, into the rhino house would fit the uh, yeah the, t uh, the topic and the thematic area over here. Uh, very simple, nothing much to it. Just a nice little yeah, animal to look at while you are waiting to get in the rhino house. And speaking of, it looks like it's very empty today, but we have to be a little bit more quiet here. Um, of course, because we have rhinos and there is one of our black rhinos and a cheetah, apparently, uh, just running through. I don't know where he, they come from, but <laughs> this is our rhino house. Um, and I think I really like how it turned out. Definitely has a more modern vibe than the um, African, North African, Egyptian uh, sand desert vibe. A bit more modern, a bit more classical zoo theme over here, um, but still we love how the more lushness, a bit more tropical with this um, green wall over here and then some plants in the foreground uh, because we are in a more of a uh, climate controlled environment over here. We can con uh, grow some plants that we couldn't grow outside in the scorching sun and they also seem to enjoy it. Um, really live, like how, it how this little mode turned out. Uh, first time building with these small proportion modes. Um, it's still quite big, but yeah, it's still a very small mode. Um, and I think it's something yeah that you would see in a real zoo when you have a rhino indoor viewing area. Um, they have this mode and so keeps the rhinos, of course, away from the guests. And so keep the guests away from the rhinos, vice versa. But yeah, there is, of course, more to it. As you saw in the video, there's a whole backstage in the background. Of course, with another holding area over here for the rhinos. And this gate that I added, which wasn't in the video, but uh, it was just too much struggle for me to figure out how a gate works. Uh, go figure. I sometimes also have brain farts and don't know how uh, stuff works. But yeah, this gate uh, essentially would work. It either works as to keep this area closed, but we can also sh uh, swing the gate around to close to this area. And then we could bring a rhino, for example, uh, in from that door that leads to the outside. We could bring a rhino in, uh, close the gate behind the rhino once it's in this area and then we have a rhino in and we can also transport them out, vice versa, st stuff like that. For cheetahs, of course, we can just bring them in crates very easily. And speaking of cheetahs, um, of course, this is another hallway of this backstage building, of course, with all the yeah, staff rooms and such, but also with the cheetah backstage areas over here. Um, very important caution behind this line. And yeah, these are three cages for the cheetahs, all with working. Um, gate openers over here that of course are uh, yeah closed or opened according to the gates that are uh, visible so this connects to this gate and if this is open so this uh, yeah, gate opener is, is down and this one is closed so the gate opener is more is yeah hang up I don't know <laughs> and yeah um, Nothing much in the outside. Uh, I still want to add uh, yeah, a bit of a loading bay over here um, once I get to that, but I think I will push that. Also, I saw some mistakes there that I will not show in the video. Uh -huh. Go watch it yourself again if you want to see that mistake. Um, I think I will uh, yeah, mix this in with the whole backstage area making for all the other animals uh, in the future when I do that. And yeah. Still very excited how the whole area and habitat turned out, um, how the whole feeling come to, came together. And as said in the video, this is the last animal from the um, arid animal pack. So now we are building with animals that already existed in game to kind of finish this zoo. And of course, Mr. G uh, Gecko's area is also still about to come into this place and then we can yeah, basically finish phase one or whatever we're gonna call it of uh, Waja Mila and you guys will be able to get your hands on the zoo itself. But until then, I said next week there will not be a video, but after the Q&A in the week after that, we will be back in Waja Mila. And until then, I wish you a great time, stay safe, 
yeah have a nice rest of the week and i see you in the next video so bye bye everyone